No, it's not going to be another retro console review about the Game Boy. Actually, the review is going to be about this. A Famicom clone that looks like a Game Boy called the Doctor Boy. Let's start by talking about some of the awesome packaging this thing came in, and we'll work our way to the system and the stuff it came with. Doctor Boy, play games on the street or at home on TV. Technically, that isn't a lie, and I'll tell you why I said technically in a few minutes. It also has the ability to play one or two players. Yes, you could actually play two players on this without the need of a second unit or trading off holding this thing. That's pretty cool because none of the Game Boys can actually do that. And look, there's the cartridge right there. A very Game Boy-like cartridge too, only much cheaper looking. Do you really think the graphics look anything like what's going on in the cover of this thing? I'm thinking not. So let's check the back out. Brand new mini portable game set and TV console all in one with large LCD display. A large variety of game cartridges. You know, I kind of doubt that having tried to look this thing up before the review and haven't really found any games for it. AV function, TV compatible with a wide range of accessories available. Blah, 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 same junk on the front. I don't see any indication of what company made this so far or a date to figure out when this thing was manufactured. Hey, here's the different colors this thing comes in, like blood fart red, nuclear vomit green, root canal silver, and dead body blue. Still no company logo. I guess I'll just call these guys Pretendo. Looks like that's it for the packaging. It's time to open this thing up. Uh, okay, so let's start off with the really cheap looking game cartridge. This thing feels really cheap too, like it's gonna crumble in my hands being made out of bunk plastic. The cartridge and sticker area is roughly the same size as an official Game Boy cart. Even the lines on the side of the grip indent are the same. But it still has a few differences, like the weight being one. And the strange corners cut from the bottom to make it look like a little mini Famicom cartridge? Probably because it is. It's probably so you don't shove an official game cart in and ruin it because the edge connectors are different as well. The Game Boy cartridge edge connector contacts are one-sided and laying against the back of the casing while the Dr. Boy is positioned in the center and double-sided, kind of like an NES or Famicom cartridge. Some of the other things this thing comes with is a Dr. Boy to Famicom adapter so you can play all your favorite Famicom knockoffs. I don't have any Famicom carts with me today so I can't show you it working, but basically you plug the adapter into the top of your Dr. Boy, then plug the cart into the connector and voila! No, NES carts won't fit. I've tried. Bummer. We get a 6 volt AC adapter that looks like a little Game Boy. Mine kind of looks like the styrofoam packaging melted a little before it got here from wherever it was from. And we get some AV cables to plug into the TV. Anyway, this is basically everything we need to start hooking this thing up and playing. It looks like it's all for the accessories, so now it's time to check out the system. Let's start off with the back. As you can see, the Dr. Boy is roughly the same size as a Game Boy, although this is an original Game Boy, not the Game Boy Color as the Dr. Boy was modeled after. The Dr. Boy battery compartment lifts up from the base similar to the Game Boy Color, except the Dr. Boy battery bay is much larger to accommodate the use of four AAA batteries. Let's take a look at some of the other things this system has, like the peripheral ports and jacks. On the top we see the AV jacks, white for audio and yellow for video. We also see the cart slot where the Game Boy-like carts are placed. Unlike the Game Boy cartridge slot with its power switch lip that extends out when the machine is switched on so it keeps the game in place, the Dr. Boy doesn't have that, yet the game it came with still includes the missing corner. Also, the game is much harder to get in the edge connector slot than the Game Boy as you really have to push on it to get the cart to click in. And it doesn't exactly fit either as the cart is left hanging over the top of the machine. On the left side of the system is Absolutely nothing. Yeah, a total blank space here. On the bottom we find a 6 volt power supply jack and what looks like to be a third party controller port that resembles controller ports from a Sega Genesis. So you could plug in your Sega Genesis controller to play ripped off NES games on a Famicom clone that looks like a bootleg Game Boy Color unit. On the right side of the machine is a switch with three settings. Off, which has an obvious job, TV for plugging into a television and playing the games through an AV jack, and LCD. Now for what we've all been waiting for, the front of the unit. Oh boy. 
We can see the Dr. Boy has an A and B button in the same position as the Game Boys, but the Dr. Boy has a C and D button set, plus an extra reset button between the start and select, which the Game Boy doesn't have. First off, I don't know why it would need four buttons A, B, C, and D, as none of the games on the cart take more than two buttons to play. And they don't work as a rapid fire or anything special, so it's kind of a mystery as why they're there. Both units have similarly placed directional pads and speakers, but the screens are a bit different. No, not because one is an original Game Boy and the other one is modeled after a Game Boy Color, although that's a difference too. And as you can see, there are some designs already visible on the screen. And no, I didn't accidentally turn it on. Those are there permanently. Remember when I said technically they didn't lie when they mentioned you could play games on the go? Well, technically you can. A game. If you could even call it a game. Yes, the screen is similar to one of those cheap LCD pop station or Tiger electronic handheld screens, and the cartridges only play through the AV cables to the TV. So you're stuck playing some weird pop station game you can barely see or understand, and the noises coming through this thing sound like you're trying to strangle the system to death when you're out and about. 